Okay, let's talk about Enphase Microinverters. This is part three of a four part series that I'm doing all about optimizers and uh, microinverters. And today we're talking Enphase. And I've brought along with me Yorick here, who's not only one of our solar consultants, but he chose to go with Enphase on his own home uh, fairly recently. Yes, I did, Mark. So I ended up putting on an 8.6 kilowatt Enphase system on my house. Now, I had to run through some pros and cons. Now, we're going to talk about six reasons why solar companies will tell you to put Enphase on your house. Okay, and not all of them are good reasons, are they? No, I think, look, there are some that are definitely more important than others. I, I think probably the biggest myth is that you'll get a huge performance boost. So number one reason, performance gain. Yes. Is that right? So... It's not, not uncommon for me to hear that a company's t telling customers that they can get the same performance out of a three kilowatt Enphase system as you can get out of a six and a half kilowatt string inverter system. And that's just not true, Mark. Well, I mean, if you're in complete shade, eh, maybe there's a little bit of maybe, but uh, you're talking about roofs that are not shaded. If you have no shade on a roof, you'll see marginal to no improvement using Enphase. Now, it is true that you may get some performance loss due to minor soiling and mismatch in performance between panels, but you're only talking a few percent here and there. Potentially, potentially more, potentially less. We could debate that and we could go and look at different um, uh, kind of different uh, tests that people have done about Enphase versus string systems. But uh, in reality, this is not why you buy an Enphase system to get extra performance. And in fact, there is one negative which gets a little bit technical uh, is voltage rise that you can potentially get on an Enphase system. So if you don't have shade and you've got a voltage rise issue in your home, well, Enphase is just going to add to that problem. So, uh, you know, performance increase with no shade, do we call it? Myth debunked? I think myth busted. Myth busted, is that the term? <laughs> yes, okay, we'll call it that. Yes. I didn't want to get copyright infringement oh, from that company. Myth debunked. Yeah, okay, so. <laughs> right. Okay, so um, number two reason, Yorick, this is an interesting one. Sometimes we don't completely agree on this one, but it's monitoring. Yeah, so one of the really cool things about microinverters is that you can see the output of every single panel separately, but I think some of that is overstated. Customers... It's often said to me that how do I figure out if something goes wrong if I can't see what every single panel's doing? Well, look, yes, you can see what every panel is doing, but you can only really see what your system has produced for that day. Um, yes, it stands out like a sore thumb, but it's not quite as in-depth as I think it would be uh, as I would like. Yeah, sure. So let me throw some questions at you for your system. So can you see what one panel of your system has produced today? I can see what one panel has produced for today. Okay, can you jump on your monitoring platform and tell me what one of your panels is producing right now? No, I cannot. No, but I can jump onto my Fronia system, which I have at home, and I can tell you what my complete system is producing right this in the last five seconds anyway, you know, with five second updates. Can you tell me what your whole Enphase is producing right this second, within the last five seconds? No, <laughs> so, I cannot. And you can't? No, <laughs> I'm lucky. Yeah. So, um, so you can't do that. Um, and can you tell me, um, does your system tell you how much you're returning on your investment because they're taking into account that you're getting 10 cents for your feed-in tariff and you're paying 20 cents for your power? No, I cannot. No, but you can tell me what every individual panel is doing, which yep. is maybe a plus. It's also worth mentioning that, look, you do get a general overview of how much you've produced and how much you've consumed. And, and look, if you just want a basic understanding of are you using your system effectively, yes, Enphase will do that for you. But it, it does, definitely does lack a few features, at least on the consumer platform, uh, compared to some other monitoring platforms like Fronius. Yeah. So, and I've said this with all other optimizers as well in my other videos, is panel level monitoring. Yeah, it's fine, but your panel is probably not going to fail. I would call it micro inverter monitoring because there's much more chance of a box of electronics up on your roof failing than there is a panel. Enphase does that panel level monitoring or, or micro inverter level monitoring really well. And if you happen to have a failed panel too, it'll, it'll tell you that as well. I think that brings us into the next topic of reliability. Reliability. Okay, sure. Uh, so reliability. So Enphase tell us that there are that I went over to Silicon Valley and met with the head of Enphase a while ago and their figures are 50 defective parts per million per year that they're going to ha have. So 50 parts per million, that sounds ridiculously good, doesn't it? It does sound ridiculously good, but it's worth keeping in mind you've got 20 panels or more on a roof and you expect those panels to last for 10 years. Now, if you do the maths, it works out to be about a 10% chance that you'll have one out of those 20 panels fail in the first 10 years. Now, good news, that's covered under warranty. 
On the other hand, the Envoy, which is a critical component of the system, so that's what gives you the monitoring and your panel level rapid shutdown, um, that only comes with a five-year warranty. Yeah, okay. So re reliability, when you're talking theoretically, as you said, you've got a standard house, you've got a 10% chance of one failing in 10 years, but that's all under warranty. After that, and, and this is my problem, and I'd be interested in your point of view of this. I think you've changed my mind on this a little bit, but after that year 11, you have one fail, you've got to pay for a Sparky to come out and replace it. Maybe year 12, you have another one fail. Maybe every year after that, they, they start popping one by one. And I'm thinking drama, drama, you don't want to do that. But you've pointed out from a customer's point of view, is that a... Well, look, put it this way. If I have one out of my 20 panels fail, I've got a 5% loss. Look, I can live without one panel. Uh, it's not like I've lost the whole array. Uh, now, of course, if three or four of them pop, at that point I'm starting to think, okay, maybe the system's on its way out. Uh, you could just replace the microinverters potentially. Um, I guess at that point the system will have paid for itself in full uh, and you would have already made your return on investment. I don't think it's fair to say that we expect the panels, to, uh, the inverters, to start dropping off like flies after the 10-year mark? Yeah, no, I don't think so too. Um, and uh, I guess one other big thing, um, so we've been installing Enphase since 2015, beginning of 2015, so that's nearly six years. Uh, we've installed over 3,000 microinverters and we have had, it's just been updated from two to three failures in over that period of time. So We've had one failure per, per year. And as it turns out, if you do the maths of 50 defect, defective parts per million, do the maths backwards, that's pretty much what we would expect uh, is having one failure every year. Yeah, um, and if you compare that with, say, a string inverter like Fronius or SMA, it's very comparable in terms of reliability. Now, I mean, there are, of course, sometimes software glitches. I can tell you from my own experience that I had one of my panels uh, drop out. Now, it definitely wasn't a, uh, a, a warranty case. Uh, I just called up Enphase. Um, I gave it my Envoy number, and within two days, um, they sent through a software patch, and it's now been fixed and it's up and running as if it was brand new yeah okay so yeah so they're really they have been really good with their support for us and i i would say they're uh, quite ridiculously reliable really no i've got no complaints about the reliability on my end yeah sure yeah okay number number four point number four of why people say you should get um enphase micro inverters uh it's safety and uh, i think i think we can have almost a little bit of a debate we could debate all day this point yeah i think it's i think it's a, a topic where there's definitely some good reasons to consider end phase when it comes to safety i think a good example is we just recently had a severe hailstorm that came through springfield as uh, springfield and uh, green bank i unfortunately was one of our customers who got hit very badly and i lost pretty much my whole system unlike a lot of our other customers with string inverters where we had to go out to site and make safe basically this involves going through and unplugging every one of those panels to ensure that there's no power running down uh, the house i simply had to turn off the um, ac supply and every single one of those panels shut down at the panel and um, i don't have to worry yeah, and, and I guess the same thing is, uh, God forbid, you're in a house fire, not created by solar, but let's say you're in a house fire and it's burning down. As soon as you turn off the main switch, all those panels shut down, so it's not going to add to the problem. To be fair, if your house is burning down, the least of your worries is that your end phase system's going to burn with it, I would have thought. But, uh, that you know, it, it is a... You know, there are marginal improvements on safety too. I think I do have to point this out because I've been talking with friends in the industry about this and they po pointed out something important. Here's an Enphase microinverter, by the way. Um, and so these go one behind every panel up on your roof. And what you have here is the, the DC plug. So these are MC4 connectors that plug into your panel. So there's your panel plugs there and plug into the Enphase. And then you have this AC plug that comes off it. So that's a fairly heavy box of electronics that's on your roof uh, for a start, which is a re reliability thing. But as they point out, is safety. Yeah, sure, we've only got now, as it turns out, only got 40 volts per panel, but we've got a whole lot more connectors on our roof and connectors theoretically can be a, another weak point on your roof. And you've got a whole lot more cable kind of, you know, tangled up all over your roof. Um, um, that is theoretically a weak point weak point for reliability and I guess theoretically a weak point for safety too. So it's not all pros about safety when you talk about Enphase. There's some theoretical negatives too. I think yours, um, the biggest takeaway, and I always say this um, about systems and safety, is the biggest 
way you can get a safe system is get a quality installer to oh, install it. Definitely, 100%. Look, this is why you want to get somebody who knows what they're doing and ensures that they put quality and safety over price. Um, yes, you might pay a bit more for quality solar install, but in the long run, you'll be far better off. And I think it's fair to say with the string system too, the way it's installed with heavy duty conduit and all the regulations that we have to keep today, as long as you've got a decent installer installing it, you, you don't have an unsafe system on your roof anyway. No, I would have no problem having a string inverter on my house. Yeah. It's not really the reason you bought Enphase. No, it's definitely no. not the reason I bought Enphase. I think really the next big thing is to talk about shade. Shade, okay. So, so shade, let's say you've got shade uh, uh, maybe like on my house from a few panels in the afternoon, would you have gone Enphase? Look, I don't think I would have if it was just two or three panels on a corner. Now, the reason I went for Enphase is because I have a park to the north of my house. Now, fortunately, I don't have too much shade yet, but I've got no control over those trees. Where Enphase really comes into its own is where you've got a uh, shade that might move across the roof where all the panels at some point will be affected by it. Yes, you could go through and put optimizers on every single panel, but look, it's basically a compromise system. So optimizers are there to do what a microinverter system can do at a cheaper cost, but you don't get the same results. Where microinverters really work well is where every single panel is independent. Um, and so if you have heavy shade or shade where you have every panel shaded except for one, that one panel can still work at its full capacity. You just will not get the same performance out of a string inverter with optimizers. Yeah, I, and I think that's really important. If we put an end phase system in a rainforest, and only one of those panels are in the sunlight at a time, each one of those panels will produce. If you do that with a Tygo system or a Huawei system or a Solar Edge system, you're not gonna get the same result. You still have to have a minimum number of panels in the shade so that it basically clocks on the inverter, um, which is located down next to your switchboard. Yeah, so so Enphase microinverters aren't always the best solution. We, we try to give advice depending on your roof and your situation. But if you've got even a moderate amount of shade, microinverters are definitely something I would strongly recommend. Yeah, I, I would think so too. And there's that tipping point. And as I've said earlier in my Huawei and, and Tygo reviews, if you've got shade on two or four panels, you know, a, a, a minority of your panels, um, then I would possibly avoid the expense of going to Enphase and, and I'd probably just put two optimizers on there. And also I like the idea of not putting power electronics behind every single panel if you have to, even though Enphase has pro proven to be really reliable. If you can avoid um, putting power electronics and you know MC4 connectors everywhere, then personally I would avoid it. Yeah, sometimes good enough is good enough. And um, and th that's sort of where you have to weigh up the pros and cons between a string, a string plus Tygo or a microinverter system. But I guess that's also really an important part about the system design that we as consultants do. I think that might be the next topic we talk about. Design, yes, yeah. Okay, um, so... So yeah, what are we up to number six, isn't it, here? I think so, this is number six, yes. So the sixth reason that we would recommend, I think, yours to install Enphase is the design flexibility that it gives you. And Definitely. Talk more about that. Yeah, so look, we've got some really interesting cases sometimes where you're talking like units or um, just very awkward roofs. Now, there are things you can do with microinverters that you just cannot do with a string inverter. Um, we had a, I've got a good example of a customer where we had a three-story house and the switchboard was an in internal wall on the bottom floor. Now, we could not run DC cable through that, that house. With, with a microinverter system, yes, it involves some cutting into walls, but we could actually mount the envoy on the bottom floor next to the switchboard and have everything internally and basically keep it looking really neat and, and just do it in a very safe way. Yeah, so that's one thing. So is the cable that goes between your roof and your switchboard with Enphase is an AC cable, so it it just we're it, it makes it much simpler to tuck that cable into walls, and we can protect that cable with a safety. It, it switch. also goes under a different um, wiring regulations as well. Yeah, that's right. There's there's different um, reg restrictions of how we can install that cable. Yeah. Uh, and then let's say you've got a chopped up hexagonal roof. You you know you live at the Sydney Opera House or something like that. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's a good point. So I, I guess it sort of comes back down to how having the panels all work independently. Yes, with a Tygo or, or any optimized system, you can have panels on lots of different orientations. But what you're going to find is those optimizers are constantly going to be working to try and get around that the difference in performance between panels is not really what you want. Again, when you have a microinverter system, you don't have one solar system. You have 20 individual solar systems that are all working as one big system together. So it doesn't matter if you have one panel facing flat and one panel facing at a 
pitched towards the north and one facing south. You can do whatever you want. Every panel is its own solar system uh, and, and they work independent regardless of how you wire them up. Yeah, sure. But that obviously points to the big um, negative with end phase. And if you've got if you've got a roof that's like the Sydney Opera House or something like that, where we're putting one panel here and one panel there and one panel there, or even if you're not, even if you're just putting it all in one orientation, the elephant is the room in the room is that end phase costs a whole lot more than. Yes, end phase is an expensive system, mm. and I think it also comes down to what your budget is. Where you may want to consider optimizers if you're trying to really sort of weigh up the cost versus um, the performance. Um, Again, it comes down to what might be good enough. An optimised system may give you a good enough result for that money and and it will give you at a lower cost. And I'd go a little step further than saying it may be good enough. I I would say quite often less is more, you know, having less components, less complexity in your solar system, less things to break down is a better solution and quite often a cheaper solution. Definitely, well. especially if you can get get away with selectively deploying optimizers. Uh, if you can, if you only have to have, if you only got shade on half the roof and you can put optimizers on just those panels, 100% would I recommend going down that path. However, if you've got a roof where there's lots of shade and you know that at some point you want every panel to work separately, well then the cost difference becomes less and less. Um, I mean, it still is more expensive to go for end phase, but it is the better system. It's it's probably more reliable. Um, you do get better performance, especially in the heavier shaded situations. Um, yeah, and then you also get the safety benefits of a microinverter system too. So I think it sort of goes back to the previous points we touched on. There's some really good reasons to buy Enphase, but it really comes down to your circumstance and your budget as to which one we would recommend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's a wrap there. Yes. Oh, I'm going to finish it off with one point is I get this question quite a lot on my blog. Uh, and maybe you get it from customers too, is at what what is the tipping point? What is the tipping point that you say, okay, this is not an optimizer so- solution, this is a uh, end phase solution. The reality is I don't think I can give you an answer for that because it really depends, like I can't give you broad brushstroke answers because it really depends on the layout of, of your roof and how many panels you've got in a string and is that um, inverter gonna stay online if you've got four of the panels shaded on that part of the roof? And then there's obviously the cost issue too. So it really is a design issue. And that's this is the reason that we got guys like Yoz who understand what they're doing. Okay, so Yoz, I reckon that's a wrap. Um, so end phase, thumbs up? Yeah, give it a thumbs up. But not probably not in every situation. Uh, sometimes less is more. <laughs> sometimes having a simple, simple solution is better and paying more for end phase doesn't give you more. I've got end phase, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to. I think that's a fairly good summary. Yep. Now, thanks just, for watching. Now, yeah, thanks for having me on, Mark. It was a pleasure. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, click the bell icon. Beauty. Okay, catch you next time. Catch you next time.